Okay, I want to talk about how to do the binomial. And so there's a couple of steps to this. First of all, you should already have a frequency distribution. Um, hopefully you made one for like your histogram or something else, but if you don't have one, that's your first thing you need to do. Um, to do a frequency distribution, the best way is to sort your data. So I would take all this data and I would come over here and I would sort it, custom sort. I'm going to sort by the temperature column smallest to largest. Then I can see, well, between 10 and 20, I have 10, and that's how I got the 10. Okay, um, now I want to ask a question. So my question might be that I want to know what's the probability, what is the probability that the temperature will be 41 or above. Now, as soon as I said 41 or above, because if I had just said above 41, I couldn't include 41. I would have had to come over here to my actual data and count because I would have only had 11 because I couldn't have counted 41. As of this, I can just add up this. X equals 10 plus 2 equals 12. Um, that's how many times above for 41 or above happened in my data set. Um, as I said, so you do want to kind of pay attention to that question because 41 or above includes 41. Above 41 does not include 41. Okay, so then P is simply going to be X divided by N. So how many data points did I have? I don't remember. 57. So my, and I could also do it this way, so I have 57. So this is going to be 12 divided by, fifth, not that, 57. Okay, so then there is my P. What's my Q? My Q is 1 minus that one I just got, so F17. There's my Q value. So I have about a 21% chance of it being above 41. I have a 79% chance it will be below. Now I want to find the expected mean. So the mean of a binomial is n times p. You were told to do a sample of 10, so 10 times 0.21, which we get this out, though this is pretty easy, um, and you get 2.1. Oh, that's not what I typed, is it? Okay, the standard deviation of a uh, binomial is the square root of NPQ. So in our case, the square root of 10 times 0.21 times 0.79. So then I would just put that into my calculator. So really, 2.1, that's the first time, times 0.79. And you get about 1.65. I'm going to take the square root, and I get about one point. So now what does this mean? So the last part of this, part 4, is explanation sentence. So I want you to tell me what the mean and the standard deviation means. Well, this means that if I polled a random selection, I can't spell, of 10 days, I would expect 2.1, so 2 days, give or take 1. I'm rounding these to whole numbers because I don't have half a day. I mean, though, I suppose you could. You could, you know, part of the day was above, part of the day was below. Um, give or take 1 day, that is, a, is 41 or above. So that's what it means. That's the last little bit is that, oh, hey, if I did this, if I polled random 10 days, I'm expecting I'd get about two days, give or take one, that it's 41 or above. And this is what it tells me. Like, okay, so, you know, not a ton. I wouldn't expect a ton of days at that temperature, but I might expect a few scattered in there. So hopefully this shows you how to set this up. You can, of course, always count straight from over here if you want. It depends on the question you ask. If you decide you very specifically want something that's in the middle of one of your um, frequency distributions, uh, you might need to. But obviously, 
sometimes it helps to simply write a question that you can answer from the frequency distribution.